It's been a busy few weeks here at SpaceX. Not only are we already on our fifth launch of the year, but we've made a lot of progress in the development of our human spaceflight programs. When SpaceX helped return human spaceflight to the United States last year with the launches of Demo 2 and Crew 1, it also helped pave the way for human spaceflight missions to become accessible to the general public. At the beginning of February, we announced the world's first all-commercial astronaut mission to orbit, targeted no, for no earlier than October of this year. The mission will be commanded by Jared Isaacman, the 37-year-old founder and chief executive officer of Shift4 Payments, and an accomplished pilot and adventurer. The mission is named Inspiration4 because of the four-person crew's mission to inspire support for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and send a humanitarian message of possibility. The three additional crew members, each selected from the general public, will be announced by the end of March. And in fact, if you'd like to be one of the crew members on board this mission, head over to inspiration4.com and donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Everyone who donates has a chance to be selected, so you never know. The next person they announce as a crew member just might be you. Additionally, our customer Axiom Space also recently announced their first private crew who will fly on a Dragon mission to the International Space Station. Axiom has selected Michael Lopez Alegria, former NASA astronaut and Axiom vice president, to be spacecraft commander. He will be joined by Aiton Steba, an impact investor and philanthropist, along with Larry Connor, a real estate, a real estate technology a real estate and technology entrepreneur, and Mark Pathy, a Canadian investor and philanthropist. This launch is currently targeted for 2022 and will mark the first fully private human spaceflight to station. And the last highlight to share today involves the testing of our newest spacecraft, Starship. On Tuesday, February 2nd, Starship Zero Number 9, or SN9, completed SpaceX's second high-altitude flight test of a Starship prototype from our site in Cameron County, Texas. Zero Number 9 successfully reached its apogee at 10 kilometers with the help of three Raptor engines and accomplished all of its intended milestones on ascent and descent. However, during the landing flip maneuver, one of the Raptor engines did not relay and caused Zero Number 9 to experience a RUD, or Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly. While it would have been great to land Zero Number 9, the testing campaign is the right place for a RUD. These test flights are meant to improve our understanding and development of Starship, and it's when things don't go as expected when you tend to learn the most. So from an engineering standpoint, every time we learn more than we knew before, the test is a success. And looks like we have pressure for strong back retract. The team is designing Starship to be able to carry both people and cargo on long duration interplanetary flights. And we're hoping that one day Starship will help us return to the moon and allow humanity to travel to Mars and beyond. Stay tuned for the flight of Zero Number Nine in the weeks to come. Strong back retract has started. Falcon 9's in startup. There's that call out. Falcon 9 is in startup. Now we're waiting for the final go for launch in a few seconds here. Falcon Starlink LD is go for launch. And there is that call out that we are go for launch. So at T minus 30 seconds. At T minus 30 seconds, we are, all systems are go for launch. So let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our stack of Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. 
Vehicle is pitching downrange. At T plus 40 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. Now we are throttling down that first stage in preparation for Max Q. Max Q stands for him. And there's that call out for Max Q. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees. Now coming up in about a minute, we'll have three events happening within seconds of each other. And that'll be main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start one. Now MECO is where all nine of the M1D engines shut down, and that slows the vehicle down in preparation. The vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. That slows the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. MVAC engine chill has begun. And stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Uh, first stage will make its way back to Earth while second stage continues on its journey with SES-1, or second engine start one. And that's where we light up the MVAC engine and it will propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. We're just under 30 seconds away from those three events. Again, that is Miko, stage separation, and SES-1. We've got a really cool view of the first stage and those nine Merlin-1D engines burning bright. Stage separation confirmed. And there you saw Miko in stage separation on your left hand screen is the first stage with the right hand screen being the second stage. And you can see SES-1, that MVAC engine is now glowing bright red there. And in a few seconds from now, we should have fairing deploy. Separation confirmed. And there you can see on your right hand screen, the fairing has deployed. As a reminder, we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves a day with our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. Now, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first burn is the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin-1D engines will reignite, and that'll help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And the second burn for the first stage, second and final burn, is the landing burn, and this is where a single engine will reignite, and that slows the vehicle down rapidly in order to touch down on that drone ship. Again, we are attempting to land on Of Course I Still Love You, and this will be the sixth attempt for this booster. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Now on your screen is a live view of that second stage. This is the Merlin vacuum engine. This engine has about 220,500 pounds of thrust in a vacuum. We're just under a minute and a half away from the entry burn on the first stage. Again, the first stage will perform two burns 
It will be the entry burn and the landing burn. And then just 20 seconds or so after that landing burn has concluded, the second stage will have Seco 1 or second engine cutoff 1. Stage two is still on a, a nominal trajectory. This is carrying our Starlink satellites to their targeted orbit. And we are just about 30 seconds away, or under 30 seconds away from that entry burn starting up on the first stage. And the entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. And again, it will be three of the nine engines reigniting. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, engine burn start. And there you can see on your left-hand screen as that view lights up, those three engines are burning bright, helping to slow the vehicle down as it enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn shut down. We did have a call out for entry burn conclusion. Stage two is still looking nominal. Just under 30 seconds away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. And we are attempting to land on, of course, I still love you for the sixth time for this booster. Got a live view from the drone ship on your left-hand side. We did get a little bright glow, but no longer see a, a flame there. Right-hand screen, stage two is still looking nominal. Stage two, FTS is saved. And it does look like we did not land our booster on. Of course, I still love you tonight. It is unfortunate that we did not recover this booster, but our second stage is still on a nominal trajectory. And there's that call out for Seco, as I mentioned earlier. That is second engine cutoff one. Again, we are doing two burns for this MVAC engine. Nominal insertion orbit. And there's that. Signal cape. There's that call out for a good orbit. So now stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 35 minutes or so. So we'll see you back here at T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relay. Welcome back to the webcast for Starlink. We had an on-time liftoff at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and we did have a successful sixth flight of this first day's booster. Unfortunately, we were not able to stick the landing today, but our second stage is still looking good on a nominal trajectory and getting ready for SES-2 in a few seconds. SES-2 is second engine start, and that will be a very, very short burn, just a one second burn here. This one second burn will get us to our targeted drop off orbit. Yeah. 
in that ignition. And there you could see when we had a live view that very, very short burn. It did not look like much, but just that one second burn no is insertion. that one second burn is all we need. And we got good confirmation of good orbit. So we do have another 18 minute coast phase before we deploy our next batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. During this time, the spacecraft will start to spin along its central axis, giving the Starlink satellites the momentum that they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. While this happens, sit back and enjoy the space jams. We'll see you back here at T plus one hour and four minutes. Welcome back to our Starlink mission. We did have an on-time liftoff tonight at 10.59 p.m. Eastern time and a successful sixth flight of this first stage booster. We were not able to land the first stage, which is a bummer, but our second stage did have two successful burns of the MVAC engine and is now getting ready to deploy our Starlink satellites in a few seconds. And you can see a live view on your screen of the Starlink satellites in space with Earth in the background. Now the second stage did start to spin along its central axis to give the Starlink satellites the momentum they need to space themselves Starlink out. Starlink deploy confirmed. And what you're looking at on your screen are these Starlink satellites drifting away from second stage. This is confirming deployment of our payload. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array. And over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their operational orbit. And that brings our webcast to a close. Thank you to the range and the FAA for supporting today's mission. And thanks to all of our viewers and every one of you that has signed up or placed an order for service. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.